Welcome to the Simplify Your Life podcast. It's Coach Simona and I'm glad you decided to tune in. Hey everyone, in today's podcast episode I'm going to share with you cognitive biases examples. And we'll specifically dive deeper into one of the most common cognitive distortions called self-serving bias. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Simona, certified life coach and author of the book 111 Ways to Simplify Your Life. I make weekly podcast episodes on personal development, so if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. Now, before we dive into the self-serving bias and some helpful examples when it comes to this cognitive distortion, I want to remind you that this is the fifth episode of my series on cognitive biases, and there will be 10 more to come in the upcoming months, so stay tuned for that. If you haven't listened to the previous four episodes, I will leave links to them in the description box below. I've also made a special YouTube playlist so you can listen to all of the episodes on cognitive biases by visiting youtube.com slash coach Simona. Now, before we explore the self-serving bias in depth, let's clarify what a cognitive bias actually means. A cognitive bias is a systematic error in thinking that affects the decisions and judgments that we make. Another popular term that has the exact same meaning as cognitive biases is cognitive distortion. Now, as we mentioned, the cognitive bias we're going to explore in depth today is called self-serving bias. What does this cognitive distortion actually mean? The self-serving bias is all about attributing positive events to your own character, but attributing negative events to external factors. For example, you may say to yourself, I got a good grade because I studied hard, which means you attribute your success to your own character. Or in the opposite case, you may say to yourself, I got a bad grade because the teacher hated me. Meaning, you attribute your bad grade to external factors, such as the relationship you have with your teacher. Many people wonder why this cognitive bias happens in the first place. During the 1960s, a psychologist named Fritz Heider found that people tend to make attributions based on their need to maintain a higher level of self-esteem for themselves. So, how is this related to the self-serving bias? Well, when you attribute positive events to your own character and attribute negative events to external factors, you're essentially protecting your self-esteem and trying to escape taking responsibility for your mistakes and shortcomings. By the way, if you want to learn my step-by-step system on how to start taking responsibility, make sure to listen to episode 130 next. I will leave a link below. Now let's go back to the self-serving bias. Researchers have found that when a person is depressed or has low self-esteem, this kind of bias may be reversed. They will attribute positive outcomes to outside help or even luck and blame themselves when bad things happen. For example, a depressed individual may think that if their partner leaves, it's because they're unlovable. Or if they get a promotion, it's pure luck, not because of their hard work. As with any other cognitive bias, the self-serving bias can be tricky to recognize. So we need to be aware of its manifestations to be able to spot our error in thinking and choose a better, more objective way to look at the situation. The question is, do we all struggle with the self-serving bias or is it something that happens to only a handful of us? The short answer is probably yes. While we can confirm that that is the case for every single person on planet Earth, it's definitely something that is quite common for us humans. We all have cognitive distortions and blind spots. So although we may not struggle with the self-serving bias per se, we definitely have problems with other cognitive biases. I've actually made a free downloadable cheat sheet with the top 15 cognitive biases that may be holding you back. So if you want to download it, just click the first link in the description box below or visit bit.ly slash 15 biases. Now let's go back to the self-serving bias. Here are some more examples of this cognitive bias. Let's say you take credit for a group project that you've been working on with several other people. This means that you're attributing the success of this project to your own individual characteristics. Another example. Let's say your group project fails, but you don't take responsibility and instead blame your colleagues for the outcome and think that it's entirely their fault. As you can see, before we come to any conclusions, it would be beneficial to step back and assess the situation objectively. So how can we do that? What can help a lot when it comes to spotting the self-serving bias is to ask yourself the following questions. Question number one, is this a fact? Two, what evidence can I collect to support this statement? Three, am I being rational here or is this a cognitive bias? Four, if this is a cognitive bias, 
Which one is it? These four questions will make even more sense as we go deeper into the topic with the next episodes from the Cognitive Biases series. If you're curious to see what else we're going to cover in the next few months, make sure to download your free cheat sheet at bit.ly slash 15 biases. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on my weekly podcast episodes. I'm sending you all my love and I'll talk to you in the next one.